Hi, I'm Lyle from Gulfstream Boat Sales. Today I want to show you around a 2006 Bay Leonard 245 sports cruiser. This boat's fitted with a Meritruiser 5 liter V8 stern drive. Comes complete with a UK spec road trailer. It's got a really good spec. It's a one owner from new boat and it is now a stock boat of ours as well. We've just taken it on a trade in. The boat is in immaculate condition. I was extremely impressed whenever I, um, you know, we took a, look, took a look around it to appraise it as a trade in and I think you'll be impressed in the boat as well. Condition wise it's top notch and as a stock boat it's been through our workshop, it's had everything it needed done, done, it's been serviced, it's been anti foiled it's been validated and detailed and she's going to be sold with a full uh, warranty to cover this coming season um, and uh, yeah it's going to make a great buy for someone but we're going to take a detailed look around the boat, we'll walk around the exterior, we'll show you through the interior, the cabin, the engine bay, all that stuff and we're going to put it through its paces in the water as well so you can see how it performs on our way. So this boat is a, it's a one owner from new example. It was sold originally by the, the Bayliner dealer here in Northern Ireland. So it's a proper UK boat, CE certified, VAT paid, all the paperwork's there and in order. And the owner that we traded the boat in from is an extremely meticulous guy. Um, he looked after it religiously. You can tell that immediately. We've had very little work to actually do to get this boat ready for sale because of how well the owner kept it. And that story starts here at the exterior. So walking around the, uh, the gel coat on the boat, it's, it looks like brand new. You've got a proper lure finish on it here. Um, the rub reel and everything's perfect. All the deck hardware, the rails, the cleats, all that stuff is really good. And we've also just freshened up the anti foiling paint as well. So it's a fresh coat of International uh, Interspeed Ultra paint. All the graphics on the boat are in very good condition. The bay letter letter in. The 245 model name up there, the pinstripe and everything is all perfect. And as I said, this rub rail is virtually on mark. Boat comes complete with a 6 kilogram Cobra anchor. There's a rope and chain obviously up there. Sits on its own anchor roller at the front. Um, taking a walk down along the, uh, the starboard side of the boat then as well. It's pretty much perfect. A couple of very, very minor marks on the rub rail up here. Which you'd have to be looking really hard to see. Probably the, the camera probably will pick those up. Um, but the gel coat is again the, the blue color band above the rub rail, down below the color band. It's all perfect condition, really deep shine to it. All these little chrome details around the hull of the boat are in great shape as well. The engine room vents, very good condition. The Bayliner model name, or the badge down here on this side, is in great shape as well. And just, you know, this side of the boat looks basically like brand new as well. It's a very striking looking boat and she does look in fantastic condition. You park this in a marina, you know, people are going to mistake it for a year old boat or two year old boat. No questions about it, you know. This boat's fitted with a Mercruiser 5 litre, 220 horsepower uh, V8 engine. It runs really well, gives it a great turn of speed and driven sensibly, it's, it's pretty economical as well. It's matched up to this uh, Alpha 1 stern drive leg. So this drive had been anti-foiled before. Whenever we were re anti foiling the hull, we also rubbed down the leg and gave it a fresh coat of anti-foiling paint. So condition-wise, it's perfect. There's no corrosion on the leg. The condition underneath that paint is very, very good. It has a four-blade aluminium propeller, which um, just gives the boat a really good hole shot, so it gets it up onto the plane quickly, keeps it onto the plane down to lower speeds. Um, and that's in perfect condition as well. And um, we've been through the boat, giving it a full service, um, that included changing the, the oils in the stern right leg. All the bellows and stuff are in perfect shape. The gimbal bearings are in perfect shape. So the, out here, mechanically wise, the, the boat's in very good condition. You'll also see these trim tabs mounted on the transom here as well, which are great for controlling the running angle of the boat if you're running a crosswind or something. Or if you've got a heavy load of people on board, you want to get the boat up on the plane quicker, you can drop both those tabs down. It helps keep the nose down at the front of the boat. So back here, everything's in really good condition as is the, you know, the folding uh, stainless steel bowl ladder as well. All the little clips and catches, you'll, you'll notice this as we go through the boat, but all the little straps, clips, catches, everything is there. It's supposed to be there, it's all in perfect working shape. This boat um, was originally sold uh, from you with this SBS twin axle trailer. So it's a three and a half ton trailer, it's brake, it is in fantastic condition. This boat has spent the vast majority of its life, life apart from I think one season, in Carrick Fergus on Belfast Lock. 
The rest of the time it's been in fresh water between the ban, the river ban and Fermanagh here in Northern Ireland. So the trailer has pretty much only ever been in and out of fresh water. And you can tell, I mean, you can tell that with the boat as well. Um, but the, the trailer's in perfect condition. The wheel bearings were replaced uh, just last season, the end of last season. The brakes are working. I towed the boat from where the owner keeps it um, back to the showroom here. It's about 50, 60 miles without problem. It tows really well. And if you're looking at buying this boat from England or further through Europe, then you will be able to transport it on that trailer with ease. Um, it's going to keep your transport costs down and it, you can tow it behind you know, most big 4x4s without trouble. The other really big advantage that I know people like whenever they're buying this type of boat this size is that you can sort of use it as a caravan to go away with. In the summer or at the weekends, you, know, you can easily take this boat down through France, down into Europe, or even just explore you know, the, the UK and Ireland with it. Um, and that trailer is going to help you to do that without a problem. These Bayliner 245s are probably one of the most popular entry level sports cruisers and it's not hard to, to see why. They really do make the absolute most of the available space and the, the amount of accommodation and room that they cram into you know, 24 foot 6 inch hull is really um, impressive. So it starts up here with this cockpit light which is very versatile. First of all you can have the um, the, the aft end of the cockpit set up is like a sociable sort of seating area around a big table so you can easily sit four adults around the table if you're having a picnic or sitting having drinks on board uh, in the evening. Um, you can also remove the table, the aft seat folds down completely flat against the transom and then that opens that whole area up at the back of the boat for fishing off or if you're doing water sports and you know kids are getting in and out of wetsuits and stuff like that, then that opens up the aft end of the cockpit for all that type of thing. A, a boat like this is also small enough and packs enough power to be able to pull water toys and wakeboards and things like that. Um, and then whenever you're on your way, you can fold this seat cushion um, towards the aft end of the boat. Opens up this big L-shaped seating area here so people, you know, passengers can sit here underneath, behind the windscreen, whenever you're on your way. Or you can use that as like a sun pad or lounger. Um, type arrangement as well whenever you're sitting on anchor so um, it is a really really genuinely uh, impressive cockpit lay lots of space feels nice and area airy and there's loads of room for sitting on your passengers and um, whenever you are um, on your way with the table removed and this seat folded flat you can see just how much room you get back here you can also lift up the carpets as well they're all snap in and the floor is molded fiberglass underneath there so you know, if you are fishing, you're worried about getting the carpets and stuff dirty, you can just lift that up out of the way. Um, so it's very good. You can also take off this frame, obviously, and store it down in the cabin. Um, I suppose if you're fishing, that would be important. So you've got clear access all the way around the back of the boat. Um, a couple of other things to point out is we've got a really good swim platform across the stern as well, so you can step on and off the boat from both sides. The, the top of these gunnels back here are also molded non-skid, as are these little steps. So even if you're tied up against a pier wall or a higher pontoon, you can climb in and out on both sides uh, quite safely. We've got these little blue LED cockpit lights dotted around it for, to give it a nice glow after dark. We've also got a, a pull-out transom shower here, hot and cold water. Um, so you can rinse yourself down after a swim. And um, we've got this lockable transom gate as well, so if you've got like, kids or animals or anything, you know, on board, you can close that up, keeps everybody safely inside the cockpit of the boat. Um, and again, condition wise, back here, everything's perfect. All the little hinges, all the clips, um, everything's working as it should, and all in really nice condition. The upholstery and stuff in this back seat is, is excellent. In terms of storage uh, around the cockpit of the boat, we've got storage in behind the, the transom seat, and actually in the transom. We've got a big storage compartment in here, um, behind, underneath this seat. So just fold this down, you know it's big enough you can put a cool box in there or throw in your shore power leads, fenders, things like that. All the little catches and clips and this canvas cover is all in, uh, in perfect condition. We've also got a huge big storage compartment underneath the helm seat here. Um, so again, easy access, you've got your battery isolator switch in there as well. Um, so there's loads of space for getting all your bits and bobs in and out of the way. We've got cup holders here in this seat. We've got another cup holder up at the helm position here. And just generally speaking, there's lots of nooks and crannies for getting all your 
gear out of the way. Again, condition wise for this L shaped seat lounger and the helm seat is perfect, really good condition. The upholstery is all, this is all the original upholstery, it's in very good shape. The windscreen surround, everything's perfect as well. Just generally speaking, this boat's been really well looked after and it does show. The only area I have to point out in the cockpit is literally this, this uh, helm seat. This can be, it's a little bit of a squeeze past here sometimes, so if you're walking through with a bag or whatever, it's quite easy to catch it on the seat. And you can see there's a little bit of wear marks here on this, uh, the back of the helm seat, but it's really minor. Every single bay liner you look at is going to show that just because of the, the design there, but um, it's nothing to worry about. I mean, if you, if you find something like this particularly annoying, then you should probably look at buying a new boat. But for a second hand boat of this age, this one's a, a, as clean as they come. The boat has a really well appointed helm position with pretty much everything you could need in terms of equipment for a boat of this size. Um, it's a comfortable helm seat for a start. You can adjust it fore and aft so you can get a good, uh, good steering position. We've also got a tilt uh, adjust steering wheel, so a five position tilt on the steering wheel here as well. And we've got a little molded in foot rest and stuff below the, below the dash, so it's really easy to get a comfortable uh, driving position on this boat. The throttle and shift lever is conveniently located on your right hand side, little armrest here, molded an armrest on the right as well. And then in terms of the equipment, we've obviously, we've obviously got all our uh, instrumentation for the engine. So we've got a fuel gauge, a uh, voltmeter, engine uh, temperature gauge, oil pressure, drive trim position. This is a, a digital depth gauge as well, so it gives you the depth of water underneath the, the keel. We've got our taco and our speedo um, there also. This boat's fitted with a Garmin GPS map 551, so it's a 5 inch uh, chart plotter. It's really good, it comes preloaded with full charts for the UK and Ireland, um, and it's a, it's a really good system. I think it was only installed, the owner was telling me, uh, maybe two or three seasons ago, because it's a pretty up to date uh, unit. We've also got a remote control for the stereo. The head unit is mounted in the cabin, but we can turn it on and off from here, control the volume and stuff, and change channels and things. So. It's all in perfect working order as well. We've got a 12 volt power outlet, and then we've got all the switch gear for all our 12 volt equipment. Everything in this boat is working. It, it was before it came in. I mean, obviously it's a stock boat. Anything that, that, that crops up over the course of the first season, we're gonna take care of, but um, this boat, you shouldn't have any problems. So we've got blower motor, horn, aft bilge pump, forward bilge pump. We've got the cockpit lights, the navigation lights here. We've got the wiper as well, which is proper pantograph wiper. Um, so it uh, does a great job of clearing the windscreen, even on blowier days. And then we've got controls for our trim tabs on the back. And then another thing we've got is the Navman uh, VHF radio. So it's, uh, it's important to the owner as well. Uh, we've got the VHF antenna mounted here out on the, the starboard side. The, and the microphone's conveniently located and stuff there as well. So um, this is really all you could ever want on a boat of this type. Even for coastal cruising and stuff, you know, you, as long as you've got your GPS plotter and your uh, your VHF radio, you know, you're good to go. So, as I said, the boat's fitted with a Mercruiser 5 liter V8 stern drive. It makes 220 horsepower and it's matched up to that Alpha 1 stern drive leg. Gives this boat really good performance, gets up on the plane quickly. She runs right up to around about 40 to 45 miles an hour. Um, there is enough power there for pulling water toys and wakeboards and stuff like that, so you don't have to sacrifice that side of your boating if you're moving up from a sports cutty or something and you're sort of starting to get into the cruising lifestyle staying on board you still have this boat still feels like a sports boat you know goes well heels over in the turns and stuff like that but what we're going to do now is we will we're going to show you how the engine runs you we'll fire it up for you you can hear how it starts and runs and we're also going to put the boat through its paces in the water we'll show you how it goes underway um, so you can see for yourself the type of performance you can expect to get out of this boat
boats like this I always get asked about you know should you go for petrol engines or should you go for diesel engines and if you've watched a load of my videos you'll probably see me singing the the praises of both and then I get people saying oh you said you said diesel power is better then you said petrol power is better it, at the end of the day it, it comes down to personal preference but to my mind in anything up to about 25 to 26 feet petrol is what I would probably tend to go for once you get beyond 26 27 feet then diesel makes more sense there's a number of reasons for that one is um, the availability of the fuel and stuff so I know petrol is not always available in every marina and you sometimes have to take jerry cans and things like that um, with a boat like this where you can get it on the trailer and a lot of people do use them from the trailer the launch and recover and stuff like that and at the start of the season it's always on the trailer so you can go and fill the thing to the throat in your filling station before you put it in the water which is what we always tend to do with our boats um, and then that full tank you know keeps you going sort of you through the course of the season you take a couple of jerry cans with you each day you go down and keep the fuel topped up um, I don't find it to be a, any any chore to do that and you have the benefits of petrol power which means performance is better with the petrol engines um, they get up on the plane quicker they're, they're quieter running you don't get all the diesel fumes and stuff like that whenever you start the thing up in the marina and sit, let it warm up and stuff before you go out and you know it's a smoother running quieter running engine and fuel wise if you drive this boat sensibly you know sort of up to half throttle three quarters throttle it really is pretty economical you you would not notice a huge difference in fuel burn on this boat with the petrol engine versus the the equivalent boat with the with the diesel and the performance particularly a boat of this size because you only tend to get the little diesels which is 2.8 liters and you only make 190 or 200 horsepower the petrol has it beat hands down in terms of performance so to my mind i think this particular boat this 245 is better with a petrol engine so once you get up into the bigger ones where you can't you know you can't get them on and off trailers you know, they're always sitting in the marina you know then it does become a chore having to ferry fuel down to the boats um, and it also once you, certainly once you get up into like 28 30 feet and twin engines um, then the fuel consumption penalty does kick in whenever you're on a petrol you know diesels will burn less fuel at, at that sort of size but um, it's really in this size of boat um, very little between the actual fuel consumption figures I think over the course of a season any typical season where you're running you know maybe 30 40 hours a season you're really not saving that much with diesel and I think there's just too many penalties with like I said performance and smoke and noise and all that sort of stuff so um, yeah hopefully that explains it a bit better than I maybe usually do but I personally think uh, this boat makes loads of sense with a petrol engine engine access on the boat is really straightforward for your like daily checks and for your you know more uh, regular maintenance you don't all, all you have to do is make sure that the table's not in there but you can leave all the other seats as they are and it just lifts up this hatch lifts up on a couple of gas assist struts they're all working well and they're holding it in position and it gives us really good access around this uh Mer cruiser five liter turnkey start engine so it, it is like starting a car you just turn the key and go there's no auto, there's, you know, it's automatic choke and stuff like that makes 220 horsepower like i said and it goes really good condition of this engine bay is immaculate it really is exceptional whenever we this is exactly how the owner had uh, maintained the engine bay we didn't have to do any cleaning to this at all um, and this is a real real credit to him so the engine is itself is perfect <clears throat> like I said this boat has been used pretty much exclusively in, in fresh water throughout the course of its life apart from one season where he told me he kept it in, in a marina Carrick Fergus Marina in Belfast Lock but apart from that it's always been either in Fermanagh or the River Ban here in Northern Ireland. So it's fresh water, means you don't get all that salt water spray and stuff coming into the engine bay and, and corroding components. So everything is like the pulleys, the front pulleys on the engine, which are really prone to corrosion on these motors. They're immaculate, they're pristine. There's no belt dust in through the engine bay. The belts are in really good shape. Um, it's been serviced religiously every year. We've got a bunch of service invoices and stuff and history to prove that. And even the bilges are nice and clean. You know, everything's in good shape. In terms of the equipment, we've got a big holding tank here, a fresh water tank over on the starboard side. The boat's fitted with a, a macerator which is connected to this hose here so you can empty the holding tank whenever you're out at sea. We've got a fresh water pump over there on, on the port side. We've also got our calorifier <coughs> which gives you hot water whenever you're plugged into shore power. We've got our battery box in there, big fuel tank um, located down in the, the belly or the bilge as well. 
Um, so yeah, everything's in, in great shape down here. I'll just point out a few of the, the sort of uh, important service checkpoints. So we've got our <coughs> gear loop monitor bottle here. So this is the, the oil for the stern drive with a little indicator on, on the, the clear bottle. And there's also a little alarm in there. So if that drops too low, it'll, it'll beep at you. We've got our engine dipstick conveniently located here. Pull it out and the oil is crystal clear. Hopefully you can see that, but the oil's like brand new, perfect level as well. Um, that is how it came into us as well. Um, we have replaced the oil, but it was pretty much immaculate before we got to it. And we've had the engine running since, so there's no you know build up of carbon or contaminants in the engine. It's all in really good shape. Um, and then the other fluids, our power trim fluids, trim tab fluids, and stuff like that. Everything's everything's easy to get to, easy to check and in really, really top-notch condition in here. Access out on the foredeck of the boat is via these molded-in steps and then across the top of the, uh, the cabin access door. So everything here is molded on skid, big open and windscreen section. Again, all the clips, all the hinges are all in perfect shape. And the entire foredeck is, is all molded on skid as well. So you can throw a couple of towel do towels down out there if you want to sunbathe out there. Um, and at the very front, we'll take a quick look now, we've got a big flat area. So if you're anchoring the boat, you've got a nice safe area to work from. <coughs> so this little recessed step in right here is very good. If you're, if you're sitting up here um, at anchor, or like I said, if you're coming up here to, to drop the anchor, we've just got this little rope on here securing the anchor for whenever you're towing the boat or underway. You just need to drop that off and the, the anchor sort of launches out over the front access down through this um, chain feeder down into the, the anchor locker there as well. That guard rails and, are nice and high around here as well so you do feel um, safe up here. All the hardware stuff is perfect. The cleats, the rails, the fair leads, the nav lights, everything's in, in perfect shape. I just want to quickly show you the boat here with the camper covers on as well. So you can see that this boat has the full camper canvas package, has this extended frame out the back so it takes the full camper enclosure right the way to the, the transom of the boat, you don't lose any headroom or anything in there. So those covers are all in really good, really good shape. We'll take a little close up look now at them, uh, just to show you, but they're, they're in perfect condition. And the boat, of course, also has the tonneau cover, the flat cover that you, you can use whenever you're either towing the boat or storing it, and it's in perfect condition as well. So these camper covers consist of um, a bimini top, which extends the full length of the cockpit. It's in two sections, so you have this front bimini, which you can have opened up on its own, and the back one, which joins onto it here, the zip. We've also got two side panels on either side, which are individually removable. Um, we've got big aft panel and the, the, the forward section as well, with this opening section at the windscreen, so you can get out onto the foredeck, even with the covers up. So these covers are, again, a credit to the, the previous owner of this boat. They are absolutely perfect in terms of condition. All the zips are operating perfectly. All the button poppers are all there. There's not a single tear or mark or anything that I can find on these covers. So they're, they're basically like brand new. All the acrylic as well is um, completely clear and unmarked. So the camper covers look fantastic. And the tonneau cover is the same. It's, it's in immaculate condition too. So um, I just wanted to show you the, the covers um, on the video so you can get, get a good idea of what they're like. Then we get down into the cabin through the split folding uh, door opens up there's three steps down in here again for you know an entry level sports cruiser it's only 24 and a half feet long it's got an eight foot six inch beam so it's trailerable on the road and stuff um, it's really impressive the the cabin space in here and Bayliner that's one of the things they really do better than the majority of the competition is these these cabins downstairs we've got the high level windows for a start so you can see out whenever you're standing at the galley or whenever you're coming down here so you tend not to find these cabins as claustrophobic as as some of the other brands are and it, there's also a really there's decent space in here so you've got a nice wide companionway you've got great access into the aft cabin it's not one you know it's not a, a lot of those aft cabins on this size of of sports cruiser tend to be like coffin beds where you have to get down your hands and knees to get into them that one is genuinely nice and uh, airy and spacious in there particularly at the, at the entrance way and then we've got a huge big wraparound seating area up at the front here. Make that under a V-berth at night. There's a table that goes in which will pop in the minute so you can sit and have a meal around. 
the galley itself on the port hand side is uh, well appointed there's loads of room on it uh, and then on the other side we've got our enclosed uh, heads and shower compartment so we'll take a close look at that in just a minute as well so this boat's fitted with um, like Bayliner's interior upgrade pack which included a Corian effect counter at the galley we've also got this little teak or Hollywood floor effect here at the, at just as you come down uh, into the cabin as well so it you know, protects the carpets and stuff to, on the high wear area um, and the, the galley itself has a nice deep stainless steel sink we'll pull out faucet here we've got hot and cold water to this uh, to the faucet we've got um, a little alcohol and electric stove so whenever you're plugged in the shore power you get an electric hob you can flip this out of the way and use the little alcohol uh, cooker there as well whenever you're away from from the marina we've got a, a microwave looks like it's never none of this stuff actually looks like it's ever been used in this boat I don't think it has we've also got a dual voltage refrigerator so it works on either 12 volts whenever you're away from the marina or 240 volts whenever you're plugged in the shore power um, we've got our stereo head unit down here with front load and CD player we've also got a our, our switch panel for all the shore power systems so all the 240 volt systems and then we've got a couple of decent sized cupboards for storing you know your uh, your provisions and stuff in out of the way um, so yeah it's a great sized uh, galley and um, works really well with high level shelf above it a couple of little storage cuddies cubby holes and stuff dotted throughout it as well the wraparound um, seating area at the front of this cabin and all on all these Bayliner 245s really is excellent it's very comfortable seating there's lots of room there you could easily fit four adults around this uh, decent sized table so you can sit and have a meal here um, this boat's also fitted with a TV uh, DVD player which is on this pull-out bracket um, so you can sit uh, you know after dark you send the kids down here during the day to get them out of the way to watch a DVD or whatever or if you're sitting relaxing in the evening you know, watch a bit of TV or your DVDs and stuff so um, it's a good good little addition to have this also obviously fills in you can put there's filler cushions to go in here to make this up into a full-sized uh, double berth uh, at night time as well um, in terms of storage, there's loads. There's there's storage underneath all the seat cushions here, so it's easy access. You can get, um, you know, all the bags and all the stuff you sort of comes with you on a on a weekend away, in out of the way underneath the seats. And there's also loads of room on this uh, shelf behind the seats that wraps right the way around the uh, the cabin here. So again, you can fire stuff up here out of the way. With a little uh, mirror here at the front, you can pull this down to get access into the uh, anchor locker if needs be so it's all in good shape in there as well and we've got a couple of speakers mounted there also so if you're listening to the stereo down here you get the sound system extends down throughout the the uh, the cabin so condition wise everything in here is perfect as well there's not a single mark on any of the upholstery that I can find the headlining is all perfect the carpets are perfect um, all the woodwork and the joinery and the fixtures and fittings are all um, in excellent condition. It looks it genuinely does look brand new down in here. So the heads compartment, as I said, is on the starboard side, and again, it's a really good size for the for the size of the boat. We've got pressurized hot and cold water there. That the, the, the actual tap, the sink uh, tap, pulls out and doubles up as a shower head as well. So you can the, the the entire compartment is lined and drained, so you can have a shower in there. We've got a pump out um, marine toilet, Jabsco marine toilet, which is plumbed up to the, the holding tank on board and then you've got the macerator which you can use to empty the holding tank. Um, but uh, yeah, again, everything in there is in really good condition. Little opening um, port light there for a bit of ventilation and we've also got that high level light for a, bit of, a window, sorry, for a bit of natural light too. So um, yeah, everything in there is in great shape and having that, even if you're just using this as a day boat, having that, um, that facilities on board means that you can you know you can go away and spend the entire day on board so as you can see the access into the aft cabin is genuinely very good for the, the type and size of the boat um we've got really good headroom here at the head of the bed obviously we've got a big double you can see we've got the storage um uh, sorry the filler cushions stored in here and we've also got the tonneau cover down there um, but there's a couple of overhead uh, lights the foot of the bed and also up here at the head of the bed We've got an upholstered uh, headrest with storage in behind it 
and there's also a bit of storage in that shelf there as well. So everything in here and indeed throughout the, the cabin of the boat is completely bone dry. There's no mildew, there's no evidence of any um, previous water leaks or staining or anything. It's all in uh, really excellent condition. So there you have it, that's our 2006 Bayliner 245 uh, sports cruiser. As hopefully you'll agree, the boat's in really fantastic condition. Um, in terms of the equipment as well, she has pretty much everything you need on a, a weekender or even you know a, a cruiser for going on extended stays in this part of the world, whether you want to use it around the coast or on the inland waterways. She's well set up to do that. She's got navigation gear on board, she's a VHF radio, little TV DVD player downstairs. She's obviously got the shore power system. Uh, the engine and everything's in perfect shape. Got hot and cold running water, uh, and it comes complete with that UK spec twin axle trailer, which is also in uh, in perfect uh, condition. So um, this is a really this this package really is a, a great all rounder. You know whether you want to use the boat for as a day just as a day cruiser with you know a bit of extra space on board and downstairs in the cabin, whether you want to use it for going away for um, overnight stays and stuff. Um, and it can still pull water toys and, and wake borders and things like that as well. So um, this one is a stock boat of ours. We've been through it in meticulous detail. It's been uh, prepared to the highest standards, looks the part, and we're selling it with a, a full warranty as well. Three month warranty to start from the, the date that she goes in the water this season. So that you're gonna have a complete um, season's boating with uh, total peace of mind. Um, so yeah. If you're interested in the boat, if you want to come and have a look at it or arrange to have a sea trial in it, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Just drop me an email or give me a call or you can fill out the callback request form on this page and I'll call you at a time that's convenient. Thanks very much for watching.